Allegiance. Representative Cameron, would you like to lead us? Sure. All right. I, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Welcome. We have some guests this evening for recognition, our favorite part of the school committee meeting. Our first recognition under Ar Article 2 will be Fisher S S Art Student Recognition. I would like to call up Ms. Uh, Joanne Hirschfield uh, to introduce ho her student, uh, Mr. Patrick Mulgrew. Mulgrew. Come on down. exhibit in this special Youth Art Month exhibit that took place in March, but he was only one of 15 elementary school students from Massachusetts to be recognized for the President's Choice Award, so it's quite an honor. Um, there were quite a number, uh, 25 art teachers submitted over 700 pieces of artwork, and only 15 students received the President's Choice Award, so it's quite an honor, and Patrick, Anything about this special? Oh, and I have to tell you that the artwork is not here because it's in the, it was so great, it's in the art show. So you'll be able to see that at the district art show. So would you like to say anything about the project that we were talking about? Thank you. Um, opportunity. Excellent. Mr. Mulgrew, thank you for coming before us to share with us your art, which is uh, outstanding. Uh, questions or comments from the committee for Mr. Mulgrew? Dr. We were able to see it in person yesterday at the District Art Show, and it was wonderful. So you're very talented. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, excellent. We'll make sure uh, that that goes out with our e-notes uh, after this meeting. Uh, Mrs. Mortelli, if you could do that for us. Excellent. Our next recognition is the, uh, I actually, I will just make a note that uh, Mrs. Gallivan is joining us remotely um, this afternoon, and I will, the chair will call her for all uh, votes that uh, are required. Our next recognition is the Walpole High School Robotics Team. Uh, the chair will call uh, Coach Gaffey and your um, and your students, if you'd like to come up. Uh, yeah. um. Hi, how are we all doing tonight? Um, uh, yeah, so um, my name is uh, Brian Gaffey, uh, and I am the coach of the uh, Walpole High School Robotics team, and I have a, a few students uh, with me here tonight, um, as well as our robot that they want to give a, a little quick demo of to, to all of you. But um, we've just had a, a really successful season this year, and just wanted to thank you all for your support throughout the time here. Um, I'm sure the students will be able to, to highlight it, but um, the robotics uh, team is a group of about 35 students that are in all four grades, um, and we got to compete locally at the uh, New England, um, two New England qualifier events, um, where we were uh, finalists at both of those events. Um, and then 
Uh, we got to move on to the New England uh, District Championships where we came in fourth place overall. Um, and so that qualified us down to the World Championships in Houston, Texas over uh, April School Vacation Week. Um, and the way World Championships works out is they divide you up into uh, six groups of about 100 teams each. Um, and while we were down there, we came in 11th place for our group there. So um, the team has had a, a really strong uh, season thanks to um, the dedication and hard work of uh, all the students here. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to say, uh, say anything about uh, the team or your time here. Um, I know, I know that the students prepared a little bit of a short video. I don't know if we can, if we can play that or... Robotics team, Team 1153. FRC is an international robotics competition where teams build and compete with industrial sized robots. 150 pound robots collect balls, launch them into an 8 foot tall goal, and then climb up 7 foot tall monkey bars at the end for bonus points. We named the robot Hachiko and it accomplishes all of these tasks extremely effectively. Students learn how to design a CAD, machine with tools, <coughs> learn electrical engineering, and learn how to program. We also learn how to work and communicate as a team. We even learn script writing and how to make a video. We have 10 plus mentors who teach the students new skills every day. This season, Team 1153 were finalists in two events and won the Quality Award for Outstanding Engineering twice in a row. At District Championships, we were semi-finalists and won the Industrial Design Award. Because of our success, we were invited to the World Championships in Houston, Texas, where we placed 11th on our field of 80 of the best teams in the world. Our team participates in Jarvis Farm, Walpole Day, Senior Center, and visit the elementary and middle schools. After high school, most of our team members go on to scientific colleges around the world. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors in Walpole Public Schools for their generous support. Thank you. Gentlemen, would any of you like to uh, come up and share your experiences? <laughs> Please, so, just uh, state your name for the audience. So my well. name is Hirschman Pani, and I'm a freshman on the team. This is my first year on the Walpole Robotics team, Excellent. and uh, I'm part of the programming field, like subsystem. So our job is to pretty much make all of the parts that have been designed to actually work, whether it be the collector to collect the balls and then move them to our shooter and launch them into the hu into the hub or climb up those uneven monkey bars that we just saw on the screen. It, we pretty much cover all parts of the robot and just making them work from a software point of view. Thank you very much. Anyone, anyone else? Okay. My name is Brendan Conover. I'm a freshman on the, high s on the robotics team. And um, I was part of the machining and electrical uh, subgroups. My job was to basically help build the robot subsystems and actually wire them up with uh, wires to get make sure they get power and signal so that the programmers can make them work well. And it's been a great year, had a lot of fun, it was awesome. Thank you. Anyone else, uh, questions or comments from the committee? Uh, Mr. Breen. So uh, my son was a member of the robotics team back in the day. He wasn't a core member, but he was involved and uh, he just graduated college with a degree in engineering. He's gonna work in a global manufacturing facility integrating new robotic technologies and so forth on the factory floor. So this has real world applications. So you guys should be proud of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other questions or comments? Uh, for Mr. Ahern. Curious if the robot, I couldn't tell in the video, has the ability to simultaneously do the climbing and the throwing or if there's different, um, <laughs> like uh, the different parts that are added to do each of them, just how it's engineered. So, technically, yes, you can, uh, but it, it's 
not always going to go into the target. Um, <laughs> theoretically, it can work. <laughs> uh, we've personally never tried doing that, but um, we have seen teams do it in our conference. Yeah, so just to, just to kind of explain, so the way uh, the game ends up working is you have about two minutes to try and pick up the, the oversized tennis balls and score them as much as possible. And then in the last 30 seconds, you can go off and try and climb those bars. And so the faster you can do that, the more time you can spend um, kind of shooting, um, shooting, the, shooting the balls. Um, but typically, like, the hanging area is far away from where the robots will be shooting to kind of keep the two from uh, my, uh, having, they're trying to avoid robots actually getting, like, you know, playing dodgeball with each other and trying to, to <laughs> knock them off. So uh, unfortunately, our robot would shoot in the, the wrong direction when it's uh, when it's climbing, but some teams were able to make that long distance shot. Excellent. Um, Dr. Goff has nudged me now three times, Is asking if you could bring robot the right robot. There? Is that closer. Yeah. Bring it so, um, the, so the audience can see it. It's going slow right now. It can go a lot. It can go a lot faster if uh, you're out in this field. So the field's about the size of a volleyball court, um, about 50 feet long. And uh, if you want, you can... you're allowed to hold up to the two balls um, at a time. So that's kind of how the robot's set there. And then it's set to low hump, so it shouldn't. Further questions from the committee? Uh, Ms. Uh, Syrek and Dr. Brown. So I work in marketing at SolidWorks, and so we have a lot of teams that compete, and we hear a lot about first. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these robots up close, so it's, it's nice to kind of see you know, sort of what you know, the whole engineering field and, and what you guys do. I think it, it's really, truly amazing, so nice work. You know, it's a, a great representation of our STEM field and the hard work that um, we are doing and you all are doing. And I know this is something that is like months and months of, of hard work. So thank you for your dedication and commitment. And then I also want to thank the mentors mm -hmm. because um, they, um, you need mentors, right, in order for to make this possible and, and their hard work and commitment too. So, so thank you. I know uh, Mrs. Gallivan is on the line, and she is a super fan of the robotics team. So, uh, Nancy, would you like to make a comment from the Zoom? Uh, do you have to unmute yourself? Let's see. Hey. Try it now, Try please. She's, on, she's on mute. I didn't know if you guys could hear me. Can you hear me at all? Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Oh, good. I really wish I could be there tonight. I love the robotics team, as we know. Um, I, I thought the video that you did really, really um, shows Walpole High students at their best. And um, I would encourage anybody who hasn't seen it to take a look at it. Um, I, I guess I have two questions for the kids. One is, can you explain to us why you named the robot Hachiko? And, um, can you tell us a little bit about the leadership opportunities and the, the ideas for your future that you might have?
So we named the robot Hachiko for many reasons, but the main one is that, so uh, you know the story about the dog that would sit at the train station for like 10 years after its owner died? And uh, this is sort of us as we're waiting for COVID to end so we get back to building robots. We waited and now we're back. And uh, plus, we're the Timberwolves now. It's a dog-related name. And I think we've all kind of grown attached to it at this point. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And uh, the second question, there's a lot of leadership roles. So you can be the head of a, um, a subgroup like programming or electrical. But you can also be the head of um, one of the different assemblies on there. We have like four or five, like the climber, the shooter, the collector, the indexer. And being one of those basically means that you um, take the lead in helping design and make and prototype these subsystems. And you can also be part of the drive team, which obviously you drive the robot. But there's also a human player, which is um, there's something new every year that the human player does and you help the team with that. And finally, there's a technician role, which is an overall person who knows how the robot works, how to fix it. They switch out the batteries every match. And then there's other things you can do, as uh, you saw the video making. A couple of our mentors and, ki and kids put that together. There's many different things that you can do at the robotics team. Good. Further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing none, th thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As, uh, as your robot scoots off, the show also recognized uh, uh, our friend and department head, Sandy Allison, who joined us for the recognition of Mr. Mulgrew. Uh, I'm sure Sandy's already planning his uh, APR portfolio, so that's very good. Uh, moving on, we have our third recognition which is the uh, Walpole High School Graduating School Committee representative. This year we have one. I uh, told Carrie I wouldn't cry for this. This is a, this is a big one. Uh, we have Mr. Scotty Cameron, who has been with us for four uh, years. Seems like just yesterday he joined us on the committee. Uh, we're proud to acknowledge your role on this committee, which is a statutory one, which is a requirement for us to, as an elective body to have um, a similar uh, representative from the high school to not only just inform us of the go comings and goings of the high school, but also to inform our uh, del deliberation and decision making uh, from your perspective, which I think is incredibly valuable. We've, we've seen over the years, uh, you continue in other areas to take a uh, step up and take leadership roles, whether it be in Project uh, 351, where we were just a couple weeks ago up at the VFW uh, with new friends from all over the Commonwealth. Um, cleaning up uh, that uh, very important space for our veterans here in town uh, and other uh, community service. I think uh, you couldn't make a meeting one time because of an important best buddies. Uh, it's like uh, a lot of times it's your, your volunteerism and your service to our community overlaps and, and fights for your own time uh, as well as uh, being a quite exemplary student. So um, the committee will uh, recognize you for your four uh, wonderful years serving with us, but uh, we have a formal recognition, but before we do that, I will open it up to uh, my friends and colleagues uh, to share their uh, comments as well. Ms. Demizio. Scotty, what an absolute pleasure it has been having you work with us the past several years. Um, you, you just like light up a room, literally, and um, I don't think I'll ever forget that there was a meeting once when we were remote and you had to work that night and you zoomed into our meeting from your car to deliver your report. That will stick with me forever. I'll never forget that. It speaks to your dedication and your commitment to so many things. Um, you are a credit to your family and your community. You've made us look really good. And UConn is exceptionally lucky to have you for the next four years. Thank you. Thank Other you. Questions or comments from Mr. Cameron? Ms. Syrick. I mean, Carrie really said it all. There's not a lot to say after that. I mean, and I think, you know, we all completely agree. You know, you're a great kid. You come from a great family. You're a great soccer player. I mean, I've also had the privilege of, you know, having my son play on several different teams with you. So, you know, I've, I've watched you in different ways, and, and it shows that you are also a great, well-rounded individual. And I think I also purchased piano music from you from some fundraiser. So again, I mean, I think, you know, it's nice to have somebody like you represent 
the high school, represent the community. So it's always a pleasure to have you here. And I know that you will do amazing things, whatever your path may be. Thank you very much. Another question, Mr. Breen. Scotty, what are you going to study? Do you know? I said math, but it's kind of open to yeah. open to change. <laughs> Anything further? Dr. Goff? Oh, I think I've seen you grow up. Grow up. We, we were just talking about that, so it's, it's pretty amazing. I can't wait to see you know, what, else, what else is on the table for you, so congratulations. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Cameron, it's my uh, high honor and privilege to present you with this certificate of appreciation to Alexander Scott Cameron. See, we didn't even know your first name was already in. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it all comes out now at the end. <laughs> for outstanding performance and lasting contribution to the community of Walpole and the Commonwealth. Massachusetts uh, awarded this May the 12th, 2022, and signed by myself and Dr. Goff. We also, as is tradition, uh, give you a copy of the uh, book written by John F. Kennedy, Profiles in Courage, which is the story of single individuals throughout our, the history of our republic who have made a great difference, and we trust uh, you will be one of those if this book uh, has a second volume. So congratulations and good luck in the future. Thank you. Excellent. Not off the hook yet. One, <laughs> one last Walpole High School student report the chair will call on Representative Cameron. Please. Sure. Well, uh, first, thank you guys very much. Um, but good evening. Uh, my name is Scotty Cameron. I'm a senior at Walpole High School representing the student body tonight. Um, as expected, the high school has been incredibly busy uh, this past month as we approach the end of the school year. First for sports, boys lacrosse is currently battling hard with a 6-5 and five record, and their next game is tomorrow against Needham. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the girls lacrosse is continuing their success from last year, only losing one game out of their 11 games so far, and their next game is also against Needham at home. Additionally, the bat baseball team is swinging for the fences with a record of 7-6. and six. Uh, Their next game is tomorrow at Bird Middle School. Furthermore, the softball team has a game on Friday at home, where they hope to continue their winning streak with a record of 10 and one. And lastly, uh, the track teams are both winding down their seasons as the girls finished last night's uh, senior night as Bay State um, Herget champions. The boys team just fell a little short, uh, but runners up to the title, and uh, they still had an exciting home meet last night. Outside of sports, Walpole High School has had, the Walpole High School has had so much going on as well. Uh, for example, AP Testing Week uh, wraps up tomorrow, as students have been completing AP tests uh, the past two weeks. Uh, students have worked extremely hard um, for these college level, like college equivalent level classes, and it seems overall as though students felt prepared for the exams. Uh, tomorrow morning is the senior breakfast, where seniors will enjoy a breakfast outside before school starts, and they will also be wearing their college attire. Uh, the student council planned the breakfast, and the student council also planned uh, multiple events these past few weeks, including a hypnotist event and uh, the, our annual pep rally. Additionally, upperclassmen are excited for prom this weekend. Even though it's supposed to be 80 degrees, students are still excited to get out on the dance floor at Gillette Stadium. Uh, furthermore, the National Honor Society has their first in-person induction ceremony in over two years uh, at the high school uh, this Tuesday. Uh, they will celebrate their year of service and all of their projects. Moreover, uh, the film festival is having its final night, its premiere night, uh, right now at the high school tonight. And also, Walpole's Pops concert will take place next Friday, where viewers will get to see some of Walpole High School's uh, best musicians take center stage. And lastly, as the school year winds down, seniors have many more upcoming special events, including the Senior Walk and uh, our last day of classes, with, which are all happening within the next two weeks. Overall, the high school is very busy as we look forward to the end of another school year. Since today is my last meeting, I wanted to thank everyone, every one of you guys so much for all the work you guys have put into our schools for the past four years. Uh, being here for so long, I feel like I've really gotten to appreciate how much has changed since we started. Like first, there are the small changes like the new desk and the <laughs> updated room. And then there were the bigger changes like um, the leadership change as Dr. Goff became superintendent and Dr. Hahn as well. Um, then I presented 
uh, right before we shut down in March of 2020. And next thing you know, uh, we're convening virtually. Uh, we could also talk about how we switched our mascot name from the Rebels to the Timberwolves, or even the new middle school project. As I was here, uh, when the idea was first being discussed, and lo and behold, my first voting election was to help ensure that the future students will get the same amazing Walpole education that I was given at this new school. So being up here for the past few years has allowed me to see just how complex running a school system really is and how schools are in a constant state of change. It allowed, it allowed me to see that firsthand that it's not just the parents, it's not just the educators, it's not just the students, it's the whole community that cares about the education of our youth. And for that, I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful. So on that note, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but if not, thank you for your time. One last set of questions for Mr. Cameron. What are we going to do without you? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Scotty. Thank you. Thank you, Scotty. And good luck. We'll see you at uh, commencement on the 5th? Yes. yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next order of business, uh, we move on to new business, which is an out-of-state field trip request, which is really, really old business. Um, this trip was originally approved by the school committee in 2019, oh, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was postponed. Um, we are bringing it back to the school committee for the trip to uh, take place now in February of 2023. Um, we have a recommendation to approve this trip. Dr. Goff, do you have any? Uh, no, um, you can see the, the original, you know, the out-of-state field trip request form. It's in your packet um, when they're departing on 2-14-23. And then also included is um, the itinerary. Questions or comments from the committee, Mr. Breen? It won't be the same kids going in the field trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Uh, motion, motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Breen, second by Ms. Denisi. All those in favor? Opposed, abstain. Okay, five uh, zero zero. We have lost mm -hmm. Mrs. Gallivan. Yeah, so it is five zero zero. Uh, moving on into our next order of new business, we have the art curriculum update. Ms. Sally Anderson, uh, Al Ms. Sally Allison, <laughs> who I just talked about five minutes ago, and I've known most of my life, um, and <laughs> Mrs. Joanne Hirschfield will provide you with an update with respect to the art curriculum. Um, so come, come on. I'm your mother. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. All right. We love that we have you. Art in the springtime. We're very excited. Take it away. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get to So, oh, here we are. All right. Ready? Here we are. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, uh, we're gonna just give you kind of a run through of K through 12 and things that we do, um, you know, standards and things we look at. So we just kind of put, put a few slides together and um, you know, try to give you an overview, and then you can ask any questions you might have. So what do we have? curriculum it's it's a uh, goes across the grades and it keeps growing as the kids go up so we start with kindergarten and then we go all the way up into this nice vertical curriculum um, that the students are kind of trying to develop their sense of independence and um, really trying to get them to think what they're creating and why asking questions of themselves and to try to get them to move through develop skills using different um, media different techniques so they're learning s uh, different types of materials but also how to manipulate We have curriculum learning objectives um, and where they're exploring various techniques and they're developing problem solving skills by their um, analyzing their work, works of others, famous um, artists. So we are really discussing and evaluating um, the artwork and that's a really large part of our curriculum. Um, and the elementary uh, curriculum, my students, we see them once per week for a 40 minute art class. 
and with a new rotating schedule, we have one grade level, we'll see them for a second time um, in that week, once per month. So um, we are, you know, exploring quite a variety of mediums and we are, uh, each lesson is tied to an art history component, component where they're inspired um, by the artwork of um, famous artists. <laughs> and so our art program is focused on the Mass Arts Frameworks. It was re revised in 2019 and it's aligned with the national art standards. So the creating is really uh, learning how to actually compose a composition. They're presenting, they're learning how to refine, looking really closely at their artwork and learning how to refine it so that they can present the work. Um, and the responding is basically they're, they're learning to speak and, tr and talk about their artwork and, um, and the work of others and connecting, connecting to um, the world around them. Um, so basically it aligns with the National Art Standards and we have set up um, our, when we, we grade in our progress reports, our focused, we designed the report cards to focus on those four criteria. And um, so the national standards have those very same anchors, the creating, um, presenting, responding, all of that as well. But then what happens is they have more essential, enduring um, overview ideas and es essential questions. So there's so much more that you can unpack with the national standards. And you can start to, we just highlighted like a question here or there on, on all of them because they're so large and so many, but we can get the kids to, uh, we can start to ask some of these questions of the students <laughs> and to get them to think in a different way than others and how uh, they are creating or what they are doing as they're creating their pieces. It's not just um, you know, making something and it's not just trying to, we're definitely not having them follow a step by step. It's them exploring and trying to ask their own questions that it develops them more. Um, so we have um, here all these different ones that we can pick from, we can do many of them each project or you can tailor them to different projects to get them to think in different ways. So we have them all, we just have all of them here. So this is creating with all the essential questions. And the way you break them up with the different grades, you can do them depending on the level, what, you're, what student you're teaching, their age, and what different things we can pull from them. So we have them for here. Um, yeah, presenting, we have um, just different ways for the students after they refine and create their piece too. It's how they present. It's not just presenting it um, whether they have to speak about it, but it's also getting artwork ready, learning how to curate art and hang a show, like we did for over here. How the kids can help hang, especially when they get older, they can help us hang the boards for the different schools. And they can learn what goes into it and why we're doing it and what we're trying to connect and how we're trying to get the viewers, um, the audience, to respond to what we're putting up. So. So in responding, so they're responding to um, the works of others, to each other. Um, we are focusing our stu student learning goal on responding, on learning to talk about art, using their art vocabulary, and learning to analyze um, the uh, famous artworks uh, of, of famous artists that um, living and you know, past artists from various different cultures. And we do that, my next one should be, um, it's like a long say. So the next one is the practice, yep, of responding. Okay, and so we're various, tying it into various cultures. So especially, we do that a lot at the elementary level. Um, so basically, we are tying in artists such as a Brazilian artist, Romero Brito, that the students um, are learning all about that his use of bold colors and just a whole different culture. And he is living today, his work is in the 1980s, of Romeo Bearden going back to the 1960s um, and his influence on jazz music and the integration of that, um, just being able to learn about these artists and then apply that inspiration to the techniques. And we've also done cultures such as Egyptian cultures. Um, we've done um, Adaria Leckie, um, the Nigerian um, 
dyeing of cloth. So basically, they're really, really learning um, about how what has happened with art in the past and in the present and where it's going in the future. And so one of the ways that really that we learn to speak about art, and I did work at the Museum of Fine Arts in their Education Advisory Board, and that's where we really started learning about visual thinking strategies. And the visual thinking strategies, as you can see, you're asking students questions such as, what's going on in this picture? Um, and what, what do you see that makes you say that? And what more can we find? And, it's really fascinating to see how they engage and they really look at the art. It's not, it's not, they're not saying, oh, I like that picture, that's nice. There's more, they're getting into more um, of the details of, of why. And they get into, we get into groups, they, they turn and talk and, and with each other and they're able to really um, analyze the, the artwork. And here's an example of the visual thinking strategies, uh, kind of like a worksheet. So what I said to you before is they're talking and they're, they're, we, we videotape them sometimes and they're talking and expressing themselves orally. Well here also they're, they're actually have a worksheet. So what's going on in this, in this picture? So some of the students would prefer to, to write as opposed to speak. So this kind of work, um, format, excuse me, gives them the opportunity to analyze whatever the painting is that's, that we're studying that particular unit. Um, as you can see here, Van Gogh's Starry Night gives them a chance to, to answer those questions in a written format as well. Um, and then artwork really helps express the community's values too. We try to really connect them everywhere, all world, but also just within our own town as well. Um, we try to elevate their sense of awareness for community members, visitors, and um, this we want to show you a few ways that we do this in our art department. So how do art students connect to our community? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. Let's talk about that. <laughs> All right, so school displays. Um, here are some examples of school displays in some of the elementary schools as well as the high school, right? School, yeah. Right, which we, um, and, and, and it's really, really very nice to see that the students, they're coming into school in the morning, they're stopping and they're looking at the artwork and they're just admiring each other's uh, artwork and talking about it and it, it's, it's a really nice opportunity for that. Um, I was gonna say too, um, yeah. in the high school, um, on the art wing, when you go down to the um, fine arts, it's all homeless oak boards and we can hang all the way down. We have critiques out there during the day. Um, sometimes we have installation artworks and there was a girl just last <coughs> week doing it where she had an artwork up and she invited other people to come and oh. put things on the board or say anything. They'll, and it was great because people would come up and you wouldn't believe the amount of people that would stop and actually act, you know, be integrated into that or, um, or they'd stop and ask what they're doing and ask, ask about their work. So it's nice to get that communication and, and just thinking down. They, they're you know, un, trying to take it to another level. So. And with any, any type of acti activities that are going on in the school where we have parents that are coming into the school, it enables them also to see what's going on. Um, we display, you know, it's like a Fisher School I can speak for that will display large boards in the hallways and then sometimes 3D will be in the, in the media. So when they're having certain meetings, whether it be um, parent council, whatever, it gives them the opportunity to see what's being studied um, in the school. And then Town Hall, um, as you know, we have, we have exhibited at Town Hall. Um, and it's, it's nice for, like, as we get to the end of the year, put something up for the summer. I'll say, do you mind seeing this if it stays? Oh, no, don't mind at all. And, um, and Mrs. Marjali has told me how many times people have come in with their families to look and talk about the art. So that's been a really, um, I think, a good positive community connection as well. There's one thing, too, we were talking about, and we might try it at Town Hall or somewhere, is um, uh, one of the... Uh, BJ Burke, I think, was doing it. There's these QR codes, and mm -hmm. you can put them on the mm -hmm. artwork. And somewhere like Town Hall, where we're not around to be able to explain it or they know what's going on, you can click on it, and the student can either, um, they can just talk about their work, or they can just say what their objectives were, what they were trying to achieve. And it's kind of nice when you don't have the context of maybe knowing what the project is, or if you wanted to know more about that project, or what it, where we were trying for, or if there's a culture that we were showing, something like that. So um, mm -hmm. we thought that might be a good place. Um, they mentioned the art show, but there's 
so much work there. Mm -hmm. it, it was a little bit over, but I thought maybe Town Hall would be a great place because there, we aren't there to be able to represent or speak mm -hmm. to them. So um, a place to start anyway, but I think that would be a nice addition to that to get the community involved more. In Artsonia, a digital art gallery that is um, teachers from all over the country um, will, we photograph, I do this a lot in, in my classes, we do it in the elementary program, and actually all the way through, right, the high school, and we actually will photograph student artwork, and what's interesting is you can see their comments underneath some of those pictures from, um, you know, grandparents or aunts, and it's very sweet to see what they, what they say, and the students love it. Um, and it's, it's quite a, a way to connect. Um, and it also, it, it, it serves as an assessment for the teachers. We, you know, it, while we're evaluating pieces, we go back and look and say, okay, that's right, when we look at this composition. So it kind of has a twofold um, purpose as well. Um, it, is, it is also, um, what's the, it's, the, it's a, like a fundraiser type of thing too. Mm -hmm. So the students will come in sometimes with, oh, you like my t-shirt, it's their artwork on the t-shirt that their aunt bought for them. So it, it's mm -hmm. just um, a fun um, community and, and the great thing is it's an electronic portfolio that moves with them whatever school they go to so they right. can see all their artwork back all the way to date, to right. current day. So. And we've been doing this for over 15 years. I remember mm -hmm. piloting the program more than 15 years ago and um, so it's been pretty pretty successful. And they protect. we protect their privacy so you don't really see, you don't see any last names, they have a number code. So basically, um, you know, nobody else would know um, who, who the student is, so. Um, and then Scholastic Art Awards is something that we always um, submit student work to. It's um, seventh through 12th grade. So the middle schools do it, the high school does it. And um, they can get uh, gold and silver keys, they can get honorable mention. So a few of these are silver keys up here, the baseball and the chair, and there's an honorable mention to the left. Um, I couldn't get the picture of the gold up there, but the, the gold keys go on to participate nationally across the, the state. Um, so excuse me, nationally across the country, but this is just for the state, the Scholastic Awards, so this is Massachusetts, and every year we try to put student artwork there and just do something that we think is recognized, um, that we think is really done really well, and, um, and see how they do. So Scholastics is usually in December, and then we have, um, yeah, and then we have um, Art All State is in January. We have juniors that we can send away to a program where they, um, it used to be where they'd stay overnight. We haven't done that anymore um, since COVID, but um, they work with real artists and they collaborate with uh, 20 or so kids in a room and the on the piece on the left is all the materials. They get certain materials they can only use and they get a prompt and they have to create something. So it's really a great way for them to work. And then um, in February, usually we have the um, artist gallery at Patriot's Place and you can see a lot of our student work there, but if you can uh, look closer at the pictures, it's hung up with um, artists there who are selling their work. So they've, you know, it's, it's really nice to be able to be put um, with uh, some real artists. So it makes so. them feel professional. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then uh, Barnes & Noble, we have been doing that probably more than 15 years. Um, it's where we celebrate uh, March, it's Youth Art Month, and that's nationally celebrated. Um, and we would have a, a fundraiser so that people could come in and, um, you know, they would buy books, but they would also from kindergarten through grade 12. And it really would stay up at Barnes & Nobles for, for the month of March. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, because of the, the pandemic situation, we had, the past two years, we haven't um, been able to do that. Um, however, in the next couple slides, I'll show you something else um, that we were doing for for Youth Art Month. And then Art and Bloom um, is usually in April, and we team up with Norwood High School and the Norwood Evening Garden Club. And so what happens is we choose um, artworks from Norwood and Walpole High School students, and the Evening Garden Club um, create these pieces of work that inter to interpret our um, our art pieces. And so they speak to one another. So they create a bouquet that kind of mimics what they see in the put in the pictures. And it's all drawn, you know, they get the names drawn and then they see it and they have to go buy their um, supplies and they have to try to create something to, to uh, mirror it. So there's just a couple of examples there. And this year it was at the Norwood uh, Library. Yeah, yeah, so, and it really showed well there, right. so. It's a larger space, so that worked out really right. well. 
And, and then, of our course, District the District Art Show. Art Show. <laughs> Here we are. Right next door. <laughs> we haven't got them over there yet. <laughs> so it was well received. Um, it was amazing how many turnout, how many people were there, um, and just a wonderful atmosphere to see how excited the, the, the children were and, and the families, and, and really a nice opportunity to get to, to talk to the parents, parents that I don't normally get to, to see um, very often, and um, just the, how proud they are, but also the I noticed in a lot of the elementary students how they look at the middle school art right. and the high school right. art, and they're inspired right. um, by that, that development skills, but also um, people in the public coming up to me and saying, I see a progression, and I love that, right? We love that. You see right. a progression of skills from elementary all the way through high school. So, um, I, I would say the librarians, too, always say that many people come up to them and um, <laughs> ask questions and love to look. So it's good because the community is starting to see what happens out there, too, or what's going on. So it kind of involves the whole community and people coming into the library, and it brings a lot of people into the library, and they... Um, I asked them if they were a little overwhelmed last night because it was really busy, <laughs> but they said no, we love it. Even all the you know because it was really loud. You know? right. But um, it, it's kind of nice just to to get people to go out and into other buildings and places in the community and see what they have to offer. So yeah. it's a good. And it should be up till the end of May. Yep. So when, if you have an opportunity to, to go, that would be wonderful. And um, a lot of the students like the fact that they're going to go back again. And they'll go back again and, yeah. and with more know, family with members. With more family yeah. members. They were saying that last night. So, and then this, so basically the student Patrick that you saw that, that um, Demick, this is um, an exhibit through the Mass Art Education Association. Typically it would be held in the Boston Transportation Building. Uh, and however, they decided they had to do it virtually the past couple of years. And so um, I think I gave you some numbers before that there were really quite a, quite a turnout of teachers that submitted artwork. Um, these are the students that I submitted and in, in, in were accepted into it, and uh, they would see that virtually, and there's places there for parents and so forth to leave comments. Um, and so that will be up. I think that's up even longer. It's up on the Mass Art Education website you know, to, to go look, to look at um, and see. And it's, um, I, I think it's, I think it's a really nice connection too. Students were honored. They they processed um, awards, so we will recognize them, you know, at my school. And um, I would like to do it again. And you know, I think it, it worked out really well. So yeah. our la this is yep, our this is our awesome. last slide. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for kind of sharing an overview of uh, what you what your department is, is doing as, as well as, as where you're going. Questions or comments from the committee? Ms. Denizio. Um, I'll just say it, it was so nice to hear about all the community connections that you're making and all the opportunities you're creating for um, the students art to be appreciated and seen and thought about. It was a packed house last night at the library and I think that that really speaks to the fact that um, that's it's been missing the past couple of years we've been missing those connections yeah. I think the parents were really hungry to be there and to to have that experience um, so I thought I think that's wonderful and I would maybe just suggest um, in addition to town hall that the Council on Aging might be a really good place we already have it I oh think. you do excellent those big large pictures that are in there, those are student artwork. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah there are, we have posters in the pool table room, movie posters, and we have um, large paintings landscape downstairs there. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So and, um, they were really good about welcoming us there, too. They asked, and we so we supplied them, and yeah, they really liked it. We were going to keep changing it out, but they like what's there right now, so we're, le <laughs> <laughs> we're leaving that up. <laughs> and I'll just say, you know, in my family, the grandparents completely appreciate Artsonia, and I have some merch that has been given to me, <laughs> so <laughs> that's excellent, too. So thanks for everything you're doing. Thank you. Um, thank you. For the questions from the committee. Uh, Mr. Hearn. Just a quick question, um, but first, I uh, certainly appreciate everything you guys have shared and done. Um, it's awesome to see just K through 12, like just how you can tell the students love to do the art. Um, it's evident just the high quality of it and, you know, all the different ways that they can express themselves is really cool. Um, so my, my question is, so, you know, art doesn't always jive with every student. Um, how do you guys engage with those kind of students to help them to 
I don't know. Not. I, I would say the way the standards are, we can get everyone involved because they're they're creating their own art. They're asking their own questions. At the high school, like we'll give them a problem, right? And we don't expect them all to look the same. So if I have 24 kids in the room, I'm gonna have 24 separate solutions. And because everyone's skill set maybe is different or drive or um, maybe even just they're a little apprehensive about doing art or I have mixed classes, I have ninth graders with seniors. It's more about letting them try to develop their own um, skill set and um, even confidence as they're going. Right. And they can create their own work. So it, it, we, the reason we get the buy-in is because we are letting them choose what is personal mm -hmm. meaning to them. And what is, when you do that, they're gonna put more into it, more effort and care about it. Right, to set up the goals and set up the whole criteria and then. Yeah, you still have the objectives to grade and you know what you're doing, yeah. but yeah. Further questions or comments? Uh, I would, uh, we, I've said this now uh, to every department head who's come before us. Uh, we're all obviously very excited about our new middle school project and I think with one singular building that creates opportunities to perhaps diversify offerings at that crucial middle level yeah. of ours. Yeah. So I think I, I would just kind of ask you as we've asked everyone else is just start thinking about kind of cool stuff you can do in this new, new setup. I know you already are. Uh, well, I was gonna say, um, one thing that happened last night between the art teachers at that, like we, even we can do our own, like kind of where you know we talk over there and, and can break things down about how things went. The middle school teachers were saying it was great to see what the K through five are doing, mm -hmm. so that they know where they're taking them from, or what we do, like so you know, or you know we can say to them, hey, can you make sure that the kids know this because when they get to us, we can push it further. But the other thing that happened, um, which has happened really well from hanging the show this this year because we were in person again is the two middle school teachers who, one is fairly new and, it, well, they both are kind of fairly new. Um, they're excited to be working together soon, to be having their own, like PLC, like ha in the same building and, and they're already trying to plan their curriculum together more and we're trying to align things and, and they're very excited to be working with that and doing that. So it's nice because we can say, hey, K through five, can you make sure that the kids learn mm -hmm. this till before they get to us and we do the same. So we talk right. back and forth, which really, that's what gets the kids to be really well-rounded, so. And we plan that out as an elementary art team, too. Students yeah. will be able to know by yep. grade five. Right. So that when they move into middle school. So we work on those goals awesome. a lot. Mm -hmm. Anna. But yeah, the schools are excited about it, so. Yeah. <laughs> and how long is the art show hung at the? The month of May. Month yeah, of May, month excellent. Of May, yeah. yep. Wonderful. Seeing no further questions, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you. 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 Uh, now moving on, the chair will call on the superintendent for uh, item number five, superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, just a, a brief COVID update uh, for, we had uh, 52 cases for the week of 5-1 to 5-7. Um, the town's positivity rate, um, which was um, given to me today, is 7.61%. Um, just as a reminder, we continue to follow the instructions from our state health department. And as always, masks are available at all schools to both students and staff. If uh, people don't feel well, to please stay home. Um, and those who have COVID symptoms or test positive uh, should contact the nurse for further information related to quarantine and testing protocols. Um, just as also a reminder, as part of our equity audit partnership with Mass Insight, we distributed surveys to all school and district staff um, and community partners, and we'll also as uh, students as well. Principal sent the link out for the um, family surveys in their e-notes. Um, Mary will have it in the school committee um, report and it was also um, in my newsletter as well. It's, a, it's just a 10 minute survey, it's, it's not that long. And uh, from family members and guardians, just to learn about um, their experiences and um, also um, their children's experiences. Um, families may also receive a phone call in the month of May, which should also last no longer than 10 minutes. So really a high response rate will uh, enable us to take the necessary steps to uh, continue to make Walpole Public Schools uh, inclusive and equitable for all. The survey is going to remain open um, until May 27th. Um, also in terms of summer learning program, we're pleased to be able to offer our free summer learning program in person this summer. Um, the summer learning program, it's a great opportunity for students to be engaged in a fun review of essential content from the year and to start to prepare for September. Um, the program's going to offer weekly sessions at each grade level for Tuesday through Thursday 
8.30 to 11.30 a.m. from the week of June 28th to the week of July 14th. Um, students may enroll as many weeks as they wish. Um, consistent attendance for um, each session is expected. Um, there was an initial survey that was sent to assess um, interest in the program. Completing that survey does not mean that you, you did not enroll. You have to um, actually enroll. Um, principal sent out the links. Mary will send it out, and it's also on um, my newsletter. So um, that we ask the enrollment forms to be completed by Friday, May 27th. Um, due to the high demand and depending on how much staffing we're able to get, um, some grades and sessions may be limited to a first come, first um, serve basis. And the coordinators this year are Elizabeth Ryan and Jill Masterson, so two fantastic coordinators. Um, just as also a reminder, bus registration for next year is open. Um, an email is also sent out. The contact for that person is Kim Poirier, the transportation coordinator. Um, and that um, anybody um, who is going to ride the bus must register for the, for the school bus. Um, there's an online link at myschoolbus.com um, or families can complete the res registration form and mail it in and all that information um, is, is online. Um, as Scotty mentioned, we had some wonderful, well-attended events these past few days. Um, we had Title I evening um, at Boyden School last Thursday. We had Multicultural Family Night on Tuesday. Um, where parents were able and families to say hello to our L teachers, our principals, um, sign up for a rec activity thanks to the rec department, um, to um, register for um, ESL classes. The Walpole Public Library was there. So really thanks to Dr. Hahn. I'm sure you're, you're white after um, those two events. Um, it was a lot of work, but it was exciting and it was very well attended. Yeah, both, both of them. Both of them. So um, fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, you know, yesterday was, uh, was a, a, another busy day, but a great um, afternoon. We had the unified uh, track meet. Um, we had the Walpole High School track meet, um, the, the district art show, and then also was the tri Music Honor Society induction ceremony. Um, we were, uh, Dr. Hart and I, like, just completely blown away by um, the talent uh, of those individuals um, who, who had to perform, and, and, and some of them either um, with... Uh, you know, three students, two students, or solo. So it was, it was impressive. Um, as a reminder, kindergarten orientation is next Wednesday evening, 6.30 at your respective schools. And speaking of kindergarten, I am pleased to announce that on Saturday, town meeting members passed the Walpole Public School budget. Um, this budget will take our students beyond what's accomplished during most of challenging times of COVID education. Um, we're proud of the work that was and is necessary to support and maintain in-person learning and while at the same time managing our protocols and maximizing the safety of our students and staff. Um, we'll, we'll be able to secure positions that will support the STEM fields, target support services, and fulfill our commitment to free full-day kindergarten for all. I know this was like a six-year phase process and now it has um, it's come to fruition, so that's, that's really exciting news. Um, this budget aligns with our strategic plan that um, builds on a strong foundation of Walpole Public Schools and ensures a comprehensive curriculum, and it provides equitable support services and resources necessary for all of our children to succeed. I'd just like to thank um, you know, our administrators, uh, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Queeley, um, especially Mike Frischa, and then also you, the school committee, for your hard work. Um, as you know, there's many night budget meetings and budget subcommittee meetings and LC and school committee meetings and FinCom and um, this is something that starts in October and um, it's, it's, it's a long process but it's thoughtful, it's deliberate and um, it's a successful process. So um, thank you all for your support and hard work. Questions or comments from, for Dr. Goff? Yes, a quick question about the survey. You said the phone call they might call to survey specific families? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's cold it's, call. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. For the questions or comments, since we're under superintendent support, just a gentle reminder that our superintendent evaluation is due the 13th. Um, uh, the 13th? That, tomorrow. Tomorrow, you said. I will, um, <laughs> but I'm sure we can get them by Monday if that would be good. No, no late Monday credit. Not what? Monday, Monday works. <laughs> Fair enough. 
<laughs> Moving on. Uh, Chair McCall, uh, Chairman Breen for the Middle School Building Project Update. So we had a public forum last week that was fairly well attended, maybe less well attended than some previous ones. Anybody interested in uh, the goings-on at that forum could check out the school website. It was mostly about updated renderings. Um, and I just checked the, the link and the images are there. And, uh, you know, there'll be quite a bit of activity starting early this summer, right after school gets out. So stay tuned. Excellent. Any questions or comments from Mr. Breen? On the middle school. Seeing now, I'm checking along. Uh, as far as the high school renovation project, the uh, as I've kind of alluded to at previous meetings, uh, we are we are now um, beginning to have a dual focus on our high school renovation project as well, which has been many years in the making as well, and, and a demonstrable need within the district. Uh, we have received. From, uh, I have received from Mr. Frischer a preliminary report. Uh, he has worked um, aggressively with Don Anderson, our um, building maintenance person here in the town, as well as uh, Principal Inbush, to look at areas within uh, the physical plant of the Walpole Public Schools outside of our normal capital, um, outside of, of normal building maintenance, uh, to see areas that we may be able to use federal ARPA funds for. And he has identified a couple of areas in uh, the high school um, that we could defray the cost of the renovation project to um, by using those funds. So what I'm, I will be asking next meeting, uh, we will put in your packets the sort of the month and a half's worth of data and uh, study Mr. Uh, Frischer has done so that we can kind of discuss that as a committee and then perhaps make a motion as a committee uh, to the select board who controls those funds requesting uh, some of that ARPA funding the town has. The town has roughly uh, just under $8 million um, at their disposal. They have spent a small portion. They have $2.3 or so million dollars of direct um, federal money to the uh, community of Walpole, some of which has been distributed already, some will come in the next few months. That really has no strictures on what um, municipal use we can utilize it for. So that might be something where um, plans or uh, initial phases of this renovation could be, uh, we could deal with, and I know Mr. Uh, Breen, Ms. Scalaban, and uh, Ms. Gautz can speak to some of the school building processes, whereas the uh, cost of construction rises and the difficulty with the supply chain, um, some parts of the design may have to be tweaked. So if we can take some costs off the top, um, that will be, um, I think, really good. So we'll have a formal uh, proposal and um, series of projects before you next meeting, but um, a lot of it is very closely tied to the high school renovation project. So uh, stay tuned. Dr. And I Goss. think we'll have um, an issue. We have a project meeting um, yeah. Wednesday, next Wednesday, That's so good. we'll be able to have any information. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, any any comments? So you've, so you've, you've had a couple of those now. Um, just any kind of cursory observations? I know we're really early in the process, but. Yeah, um, again, similar to the middle school project, a super thoughtful um, exploration of what the needs are um, from most of the stakeholders within the high school, um, and then stepping towards um, you now making some decisions in the near future about you know what you know parts of the curriculum, what aspects of the building, um, like uh, subject areas, um, should be targeted with um, renovation. Excellent. And you know, I imagine next week. Uh, our next meeting, some yeah. discussion amongst us would be profitable. Yeah, very good. Seeing nothing else on high school renovation, uh, report subcommittee activity. Uh, I did give a report of the superintendent uh, evaluation subcommittee. Any other subcommittees meet? Uh, we had um, a cr uh, two curriculum subcommittee mm -hmm. meetings, one that focused on um, English progress um, throughout the year and some goals for next year. It's one of the great goals, and um, also uh, math. Yep. A anything else? Any thoughts or observations on those? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to just Please. share how exciting they were. Um, I mean, and report to anybody that's listening that you know, teaching of rigorous academic standards, quality curriculum happens <laughs> in the Walpole Public Schools, and um, you know, it's difficult 
heading into COVID to know, you know, or coming out of COVID, what students were going to respond to when the data shows that our students are working hard, um, they're still achieving highly. Um, you know, COVID created a kind of a, a gap and the levels are probably a little bit lower during those testings than they were, you know, previous, but growth is happening. Um, students are making stuff happen. The teachers are doing a great job. Um, it was just really encouraging. I didn't, I won't, I won't say I had low expectations. I just, you know, was like ready for something negative. But I mean, I left both of those really rejuvenated and excited and thankful for the work that um, the leaders um, and the teachers are doing and the students just responding and, you know, learning. Thank you. Yes, I was going to say a lot of um, what we saw in both of them was some really good iReady data, one of the tools that we're using. So I think it's you know a testament to how we do always talk about data, but there is some good data that was shared and shows, as Sean mentioned, where the progress is, where the gaps are, but also how we're using the data to inform you know the next steps in, in what we're doing next year and throughout the year. So I think it was a, a really good demonstration of how the data is being used. It was also nice to see exemplars, right? For, yes. for writing. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. As well, to see the student growth. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Anything further? That's like a couple hour curriculum meeting to make you a believer, right? <laughs> um, excellent. Seeing no other subcommittee activity, citizens' comments? Patrick, you got anything? <laughs> nope, he's good tonight. Um, approval of warrants, donations, and minutes. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to approve the following expense warrants for the amounts listed in your packet. Um, warrant number 222044 and 222045. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Hearn, second by Ms. Nietzsche. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 500. Also, I'd like to make a motion to approve the following payroll warrant for the amounts listed in your packet. Those numbers are 2242PA and 2244. A. Motion by Mr. Hearn, second by Ms. Nietzsche. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 500. Someone likes to take gifts? Yes. I will make a motion to approve the following gifts and donations to Johnson Middle School, Fisher School, Old Post Road School, and Boyden School from Bay State Textiles Recycling in the amount of $127. To Elm Street School from the Elm Street Pack, a portion of the playground equipment in the amount of $23,500 and to Elm Street School from the Elm Street Pack uh, basketball court work in the amount of $3,992. Second. Motion by Ms. Denuto, second by Ms. Sarek. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstained? 5-0-0. Like someone like to take minutes? Sure. I'd like to make, make a motion to approve the following minutes, the April 26, 2022 Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee meeting minutes, the April 28th, 2022 school committee meeting minutes and the May 5th curriculum subcommittee meeting minutes. Second. Motion by Ms. Sarek, second by Ms. Denizio. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstained? 500. I had sent along executive session, mm -hmm. subcommittee, uh, executive session minutes. Some would like to make a motion to approve those, but not to release until the matter is um, resolved. So moved. Motion by Ms. Tabreen, second by Ms. Syrak. All those in favor? Opposed, abstain. 500. The chair declares that there is no need for union and non union negotiating strategy executive session this beautiful evening. So, with that, Mr. Breen. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Breen, second by Ms. Syrak. All those in favor? Opposed, abstain. 500. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.